I first want to thank everyone um, for the past week. Um, last week we were, um, we, my family, we were installed as uh, pastors here at Granite Creek because uh, everything we do, we do as a family. And so I want to thank you for all the well wishes, all of the amazing uh, things that on social media that were said and just all of the different cards and things that we received. I want to thank you. Uh, we love you all so much. And today I get to talk about sanctuary. So, uh, but I'm going to kind of bring my own, uh, my own message to sanctuary. So when Pastor Josh said, hey, Mike, I want you to speak, I thought, what could I talk about? What truly is in my heart for sanctuary? And what came to my mind is healing, because that is something that uh, my wife and I are gifted in, and we are blessed that God has allowed us to kind of co-labor with him and see amazing healings that have taken place. And it seems like for the past eight or nine months now, there's been attacks and a constant barrage on the gift of healing. When you look at the media, you hear more about every day how many people are sick, not as much as how many people are healed. Not about God's healing power, but more about how many people are dead, not how many people are raised from the dead. And so I, I feel like today, my hope for today is that we're going to help restore a little bit of that faith. Maybe, you know, you watch a lot of the news. Maybe you are just not feeling that faith. And so hopefully today, you're going to restore a little bit of that faith and also tell you how sanctuary is directly related to healing. And I don't think anyone has, uh, Pastor Michael's taught, I think Pastor Josh has taught, um, but I don't think anyone's really talked about healing and sanctuary. And so um, I am get to do that today. So we're going to really look at three different ways that uh, healing takes place in sanctuary. One, from a biblical perspective, how healing power comes directly from his sanctuary, God's dwelling place. Also, how sanctuary, I think Pastor uh, Josh and Pastor Larry have both talked about how Jesus is sanctuary, how you can experience healing through the living water that is contained and flown through Jesus. And then third, and I think probably the most exciting part, is I get to, we're going to go back and review a little bit of our history and share healing that takes place in our actual physical sanctuary. It is so cool to be in here. Not that the parking lot and the rain wasn't cool at 9 a.m., uh, but to be in the building where we have seen God move and heal. So it's pretty neat to be here in the sanctuary. Um, so we're going to talk about that. So if you have your Bibles, um, we're going to open to Ezekiel 47. And for those of you that don't know, I went to Home Depot. I love Home Depot. Uh, it's my favorite place to go shop. I went down to the measuring tape aisle. They didn't have one that measured a cubit. So I'm going to share with you, a cubit is about uh, 17 and a half inches. Um, and that will make sense as I give the verse. So the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. So... In this verse, Ezekiel is seeing a vision. And I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around to the outside of the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He then measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off yet another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. 
swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. I'm going to say that one again. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore, and there will, there will be places for spreading nets. For those of you that don't know about the Dead Sea, um, if you are a fisherman and you are casting your nets out at the Dead Sea, you are likely going to be out of business because there are no fish in the Dead Sea. The fish will be many of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river, their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water of the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. After uh, first service, um, Joyce and Sasha came up to me and they said, I wrote down, where the river flows, life will grow. And they, they said that's like their takeaway. Where the river flows, life will grow. So now we're going to talk for about an hour. I'm going to give you a little bit of um, biology and science of the Dead Sea. So Pastor Josh and I were talking, and he said, yeah, you can do it. And like, no problem. <laughs> Cheryl doesn't come on till 2, so I've got some time. Um, so, But a couple things about the Dead Sea. Like, there is no life in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, that's why they call it the Dead Sea. It's, uh, the salinity of the water is about 10 times greater than the ocean. So you just have maybe some little microorganisms and some algae that grow. Thus, fishermen typically wouldn't fish the Dead Sea. So also another thing about the Dead Sea, and I didn't get to share this at first service because right about here, we're having like our second wave of uh, rain, and I had to quickly go through so you have to indulge me a minute. Uh, it's so hot and dry, large quantities of water evaporate out of the Dead Sea, and so there's like extra salt and minerals. And that's why when you go to the stores, you see like Dead Sea salts and Dead Sea scrubs. It's actually kind of interesting what God has done with the Dead Sea. He has taken kind of an area which typically it's all about death and like nothing would live there, but it's actually used for healing. Like different types of skin conditions are healed because of the different minerals that come from the Dead Sea. It's a kind of interesting story. But I can just imagine if you're Ezekiel and you're being shown this image, this vision of the Dead Sea. And as water from the sanctuary, the temple, God's dwelling place, flows through into the sea and then life just coming out fish where there were no fish before, where the salt water turns to fresh water. It truly is, I think, like resurrection power of water, because like death has been turned into life. So again, it's coming through the temple, like he says, the sanctuary. What's interesting is this isn't the last time you'll hear about this river in the Bible. I think, uh, Pastor jo I've heard Pastor Josh and Pastor Larry both uh, say that there are certain things that are negotiable, non-negotiable in the church. Um, so I did some research. Some people believe it's a different river. Some people, I think this is one of those kind of things that I believe it's the same river. It just is it in a different context. So about 600 years later in the book of Revelation, John sees the same river. So in Revelation 22, John says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Again, down the river, there's trees on both sides, just like in Ezekiel. Bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. Interesting that they both talk about every month. And I think I know why they did that, and I'll explain in a minute. And their leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So not only is there a promise of a physical healing, but a healing of the land. No longer will there be any curse. 
the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. I think the fruit and the harvest that takes place every 30 days, I think that's alluding to the fact that as you experience healing and as this fruit kind of keeps coming, like you're never going to need. Like every month there's going to be more. There's going to be that sort of that constant nourishment. David also speaks about the same river. Psalm 46, 4 through 6. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. So in each case, it's kind of interesting how through this river, that comes through the sanctuary, that healing will take place. Healing, physical healing. The leaves will be used for healing. Healing of the land, healing of the nations. And I think what I really liked what David said is that the earth will melt. So that's the first way, like the physical waters that are going through sanctuary from healing. But physical waters aren't the only way that sanctuary and healing kind of are tied in. Jesus himself refer, is referred to as a fountain that which living water, living water will flow and heal and cleanse. The prophet Zechariah de- declares in Zechariah 13, 1 through 2, on that day a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. On that day, I will banish the names of the idols from the land, and they will be remembered no more. I will remove both the prophets and the spirit of impurity from the land. So the first talk, again, about when I was explaining about sanctuary and water is really just more of a physical water. This one is really talking about Jesus as that fountain and that living water that's coming through him. And as I was preparing this, all of a sudden it hit me, um, like every week for the past 10 years, I walk by a fountain at our church. And that fountain says, streams of living water shall flow from within him who believes in me. And I thought, wow, like, so we have the sanctuary that God is talking about. And then we have Jesus as sanctuary, the fountain. But then we literally... As you walk through and come to our church, you have that fountain outside that literally is speaking of, hey, those living waters that are flowing through him. The best verse that I could find that describes about Jesus and those living waters is John 4, 10 through 15. Jesus is talking to the Samaritan at the well. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, have you nothing to draw with, and your well is deep? Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank it from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, whoever, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. And he's referring to the water of the well. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Jesus is telling her right then and there, you get that choice to be a fountain as well. Do you see what's available to us, church, and to those watching that maybe aren't a member? of our church that are checking in because I invited you. Do you see, embrace the beautiful flow of living water from his sanctuary, whether it's the temple, whether it's the city in Revelation, or it's Jesus. Take hold and drink of that beautiful holiness that is imparted to us through Jesus. Are you thirsting for that holiness? Like the woman at the well? There is a beautiful, clear water that you can drink, that we wash in, then that we can believe in. 
And that brings me to the, probably the most exciting part of talking about sanctuary and healing. It's the literal sanctuary that we're in here at Granite Creek. Streams of living water shall flow from within him who believes in me. It was, I looked it up and it's interesting. Our church calendar goes back to 2010. I don't know if anyone knew that. You can go online and see for 10 years kind of what our church has been doing. So it was pretty neat um, this past week. I was able to see all the different things that we've done and all the different seasons that we've been uh, part of. Um, but on August 26, 2011, we had been coming here for about a year, year and a half. And there was a Friday night communion and service, uh, worship and communion service. And uh, it was probably sitting back over around there. And all of a sudden, my hands started getting warm, something that had never happened before. And they started burning up. So I touched my wife just to make sure that I wasn't going crazy. And she's like, ouch, what, what is that? And little did I know that my life would never be the same after that. That God was throwing us into the healing ministry. That we would get to be part of amazing, amazing things that he would be doing. That we would get to be vessels to help usher in God's healing power to people and to help them restore faith. We would eventually lead the healing ministry here. And in this sanctuary, this physical sanctuary, we have seen physical healings take place. We've seen chronic diseases such as asthma just cured. People who couldn't work, who were unemployable, all of a sudden healed. Cancer healed. You name it, any part of a physical body. Just, I mean, we were lucky. We've only been here for 10 years. But this is like a history of our church. Um, it's just physical bodies healed. Mental and emotional healings take place in this sanctuary. Family healings. We've seen marriages healed. We've seen reconciliation in this sanctuary. We've seen the Holy Spirit move in more powerful ways that we could have never imagined here in the sanctuary. Sometimes you chuckle at some of the things that we've seen the Holy Spirit do in this sanctuary, probably even on this stage. And guess what? He's never changed. That same God that was there, that has met you in your sanctuary, in this sanctuary, he's the same God that's here today. The scriptures tell us in James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Psalm 102 says, In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are like the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be discarded but you remain the same and your years never end. And then in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same God that met you in your sanctuary, that met me in this sanctuary back there. It's the same God today. He has not changed during the pandemic. We've changed. He is not surprised by it. He's not worried by it. Guess what? He still gives us the choice whether to bless or to curse. To choose life or death. And by the way, he doesn't beat us up if we make the wrong choice. He still listens to your prayers. If everything that ever happened on earth was God's will, would there be any reason to pray? There'd be no reason to pray. In Matthew 6.10, remember, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus has actually referred to Satan as the ruler of this world. The enemy works to bring evil and disease on earth, not God. 
Again, the enemy works to bring evil and disease on earth, not God. Until Jesus returns, though, we must realize that the enemy's agents have a, level, a certain level of influence and dominion that is rooted in suffering and pain. So like I said earlier, we have that choice. The media, like I said, that narrative. We as Christians have the choice. Are we going to allow that narrative? It's our job to continually push back the powers of darkness here on earth and claim victory through our prayers. He still is listening to your prayers. I think Pastor Josh said it uh, at first service, how, are you pr- how is your prayer life going? I think when he, he introduced me, and he was like, pray, pray. He's listening for your prayers. God is still sovereign as well. I think what being sovereign means having supreme power or authority. And I actually like that better. I think sometimes you'll hear people talk about God is in control. Um, but I like he's sovereign and he is, uh, has supreme power because I think that God is in control can sometimes allow people to blame God for the bad things that happen in their life including things that are evil. In Romans 8.28, it says, in all things God works together for his good purposes. God doesn't carry the blame for a pandemic, yet he works within it to bring about his good intentions. He uses the evil of the world to bring good. So church, Today, we get a chance to experience that healing. That healing that can only be found in sanctuary. So we're going to do something kind of unique, kind of different. We're going to do an altar call. We're going to take a few minutes and we're going to do an online altar call. We have people online ready to listen and to receive your prayers and to help pray that healing over you. Again, like I said, that will. God is still listening. If it was his will, we wouldn't need to pray. He's listening to that prayer. He's waiting for you to to ask him for that healing. That healing that can come through sanctuary. So Landon, if you would mind coming up. We're going to take a few minutes. And again, I've already made sure that we have people online. And if you do want healing uh, or want prayer here physically in the sanctuary, let us know, and we would love to socially distance pray for you. Start off in prayer. Heavenly Father, right now I just thank you. I thank you for everyone here and everyone online. Lord, I thank you for the person that wakes up every day with a chronic pain in their left knee. Lord, that like just fights every day. And Lord, right now we just pray for healing over that knee. We pray, Lord, that that knee will be healed and they will be able to wake up without pain. Lord, I just, I pray for the person that has a heart condition, Lord, that has seen doctors, that the doctors say that things aren't going well. Again, you are the God that healing comes through sanctuary. So, Lord, I just ask you right now to cover that person. Living water to flow through their heart right now, Lord, and heal that heart. Lord, heal our land. Lord, we know that our land is in, it's crying out for healing. Lord, we know that that river through your sanctuary will heal the land. Lord, that the land will be restored and that the harvest will be bountiful, frequent. That healing will take place through the leaves, Lord. So 
right now, Lord, right now, church, you have a need. We have people waiting. People waiting to help with, to usher in that sanctuary, to usher in that healing presence that nine and a half years ago, I was lucky enough for God to show me that, look, you're going to get to be part. You're going to experience that healing in my sanctuary. More, Lord. time I felt like um, someone has a right eye. There's something going on with someone's right eye. Um, almost like a, like a serious, like I don't want to say a sty, but there's something going on with someone's right eye. And so right now God is in that and God will heal your eye and you will not need uh, to have the surgery. So this week, church, and trust me, this week it's you're going to be, there's going to be a lot of noise, and not just because my name is noise. There's a lot of noise this week that is going to try to pull you out of your sanctuary. A lot of noise that's going to try to get you to focus on the deaf, focus on the sick. And like I said, God's giving you that choice. You get to choose to praise or curse. You get the choice to pray. You get the choice to be part of his heavenly sanctuary. To watch that healing, not just your healing, but the healing of our very land. So church, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to be, I can say it, one of your pastors. And thank you that there's no rain coming down on me this service 
I, uh, I'll share with you one last thing. Today, when I was getting ready, it was pretty neat because I've been growing a beard for uh, most of uh, quarantine now. And um, if you've ever seen that movie, Evan Almighty, I was like, all right, I was going to put the robes on because I thought the beard was going to keep growing because it's starting to fill in. So I just thought that was pretty funny. So, But church, thank you. Again, this week, choose life. Choose life his sanctuary. It's kind of interesting. Today, come here. Come experience the healing presence of his sanctuary. All of those things, all of those testimonies that are in this building are waiting for you to tap into. What better day than today to come for our Sanctuary Sunday and experience his healing presence. Thank you, church. Have an amazing Sunday, and we'll see you. Oh, thank you. My amazing wife reminded me, thank you, church, for being so faithful during this season. We have been able to do amazing things during this season because of your faithfulness. Continue to pour into your church. Your church needs it now more than ever. There are just amazing things that we're going to be doing. Um, we were up to probably 600, 700 views of our Halloween video. Um, and just think of that, each child that watches that video. They're not just watching that video, by the way, they're watching all the other videos that we have posted. That's life. So your hard work and your support literally is changing lives of children throughout the world. So thank you, church. Have an amazing Sunday.